In this video tutorial for Shape version 5, we're going to look at how to modify geometry using the very useful shear and the bump modifiers. So we go to the 3D module and start as usual with the sphere, which is definitely the most useful base object for almost everything. So now we're going to modify this spherical shape using a squeeze modifier. We go to modifier tab on the right and add a squeeze modifier after clicking on the plus sign and then choosing from the list. It's an alphabetical order. Select squeeze and click OK. There's a default setting which makes your spherical nebula bipolar right away, which is the main application for, for this modifier, to make something cylindrically symmetrical, different from a sphere. So we select the squeeze modifier and scroll down to its properties. Uh, there are various modes here on how to apply the magnitude as a function of position along the axis of this object. We can open the widget to see the axis that is being used for applying it. We display the widget, the arrows. This shows the, the z-axis of the, the bipolar object. We can use this widget to change the direction that or the position at which it is applied. Position doesn't do much here, uh, except the z-axis doesn't either. But the ang angle should do a diff make a difference. Here we are. You can change these angles, and then your modifier will be applied into a, in a different direction. This applies to basically all geometry modifiers in one way or another. We'll set this back to zero so we have it exactly along the initial axis. Now we choose the properties dialog and here's a default curve. Let's see what size is our primitive object and set this to something round value let's say 50 and then zoom in a little bit in the right panel here go back to the squeeze modifier and open the properties now this is the uh, there are two two lines here or one line connected by a midpoint in a, uh, divided by a midpoint which is set at 0 0.8 as a magnitude. The endpoints are by default at minus 100 and 100. That's the range at which uh, the, the modifier is applied. We are using a size of max 50, so we can set these points to 50. And then we have the full range applied to the object. Right click on the point, select set point, and then change the volume. We, for now, we keep this at zero. And now you can, for example, with the left mouse button, grab the, the middle point and see what this does if you move it around. You get the idea you can make cylindrically symmetric objects with a highly complex structure. You can add more points. and then get very complex objects. Okay, for our case, let's let's assume you want to do something conical, reasonably conical. You select this and remove point. So you can set this point to somewhere near one. So the waist becomes very narrow. And then try moving these points to get 
it's a conical jet-like structure. This needs a bit of fine tuning here. Add more points or something like that, for example. If you just want one, then you can delete this point and go to your primitive, change this first phi angle to 90 degrees, then you have only half half of it. We'll keep it, go back to our modifier, and uh, so we took it away and we want something symmetric, we can do something with the right click, mirror point, let's see, if I click on this point on the right, mirror point, we get exactly the same point on the other side, and we get a symmetric object. Okay, now let's assume it we don't want it exactly symmetric, but we want something bumpy somewhere. Then we can add a so-called bump modifier, which is near the top here. Add a bump modifier, you get something initially inconvenient. Make sure to, if you want a cylindrical bump, then let's um, click on symmetrical and the widget again is used to move this bump around. For example, now we can translate it up and down the cone using the translation values. We can also rotate this. This is around the axis of the bump. This is around the azimuth angle. And the other one is perpendicular or in some other direction. So if you want the bump going outwards, where's my widget here? Then you play with these values to get it into the right direction and position. Maybe there. So, and to modify, to change the magnitude to size of the bump, open the magnitude dialog. By default, you have a Gaussian shape with a magnitude of 10. You could make this smaller. And also the width of the, the bump. So it's a little peak there. And that's how you can make asymmetrical structures of all kinds on a symmetrical, cylindrically symmetric object. You could now, for example, if you want to have this point symmetric structure, uh, copy this bump, paste it as it paste it as a copy and then go to the widget of this one and change the sign of these values. Only one will be wrong. Nope, it's worked. So you have exactly the same but on the other side. And one thing for this kind of object, maybe this is just a shell instead of a full full object, then you can use the shell modifier to make it into a shell of a certain thickness, which is one by default. Make it two or a function of distance. Say, let's say two plus uh, point one times the distance. And you get something like that, that's maybe too much. 
How about that? And then you can go on and render that. Okay, maybe at a different angle. There you go. Here's your conically shaped jet with a bump. Thank you.